la 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 do you remember your graduation uh i don't have the uh, cap anymore i still have the tassel uh 1970 uh and i still have this wonderful copy of my original diploma they sent put them out in these wonderful little frames you know uh, to preserve for posterity, uh, from Royal High. Ah, uh, yes, I, I still have my CSF tassels too. No, they're 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 tassels. They're part of the graduation gown. I look back on it now. There were some happy moments during those last weeks in Sami, things that would linger in memory. I remember the little year-end party that Linda Lemunyan and I arranged for our physiology class. Linda and I had worked together all that semester dissecting a cat. The night before our last class meeting, the two of us got together at my house and baked a cake, cutting the round layers into sections like an edible jigsaw puzzle, laying them out in the shape of a cat. We used tinted icing from squeeze tubes to draw a smile on its face and a heart visible through an open flap in its chest. Our teacher, Doris Miller, and her teaching assistant, Mr. Branham, loved it. I remember discovering the little prince that semester. Mrs. Jenkins had been reading aloud from Antoine de Saint-Exupery's charming little book in our English class. I found the story quite delightful, and I had been surprised when Robin Bonus said it was one of her favorite books, loaning me her paperback copy. As the end of the semester neared, I brought the book back to return to Robin. When I handed it to her, she pulled out a pen and wrote a short inscription inside the front cover before putting the book back in my hand. Looking inside, I read her words, because everyone should have their own. Love, Robin. I remember that my senior classmates and I were swept up in a collective feeling of excitement. We had been top dogs on the new campus for two years and it was exciting to know we would be the first class to graduate from Royal High School. This distinction seemed reward enough in itself, but we seniors were also offered a number of privileges in those last few weeks of our spring semester. On non-test days, teachers often dismissed seniors early. Some of my classmates, yielding to a growing epidemic of senioritis, didn't wait to be granted leave, but cut classes conspicuously. In previous years, my attendance had been exemplary, but as that final semester drew to a close, even I ditched class a few times. As graduation day drew near, I didn't really know what to expect, but I recognized that something significant was about to take place. I had heard grown-ups sharing fond memories of their own graduations, and the experience seemed to have made a deep and lasting impression on them, as if time slowed down so every detail could leave its mark. Yet for me, time seemed to be racing forward with increasing speed. Each day at school brought some new milestone, and these fell like a row of dominoes, each senior event kicking over the next. My senior classmates and I spent a couple of hours Monday and Tuesday rehearsing for the commencement exercise. Having already cleared out our lockers and turned in our textbooks, Few of us took the rehearsals very seriously. Marching single file across the quad in the hot June sun quickly grew tiresome. The open area south of the library was designated as an amphitheater. The concrete walkway along the north side of the cafetorium served as a stage. We had made use of this for our production of Finian's Rainbow that summer, 
constructing our stage set on the cement and placing rows of folding chairs on the grass. Now this open area would become the site of our graduation, tall green letters spelling out Class of 70 were hung from the north side of the cafetorium roof, high above the outdoor stage. Graduation day proved to be an exercise in patience. After two days of rehearsal, I had hoped that the commencement ceremony would come together quickly, but seniors were asked to arrive almost two hours before the 5.30 start time indicated in the program. There would be no quick getaway either, since we were all expected to line up again after the ceremony to receive our diplomas. The green folder that each of us would be handed at the podium would be empty. They wanted to be sure that any seniors with outstanding library fines paid these before receiving their diplomas. With 460 seniors graduating, a strict alphabetical lineup would have been very complicated to coordinate. Instead, each of us was handed a small card printed with our name. We were instructed to present our card to the announcer as we walked up the steps to the stage. As our name was read over the public address system, each of us was to cross the stage, accept the diploma folder, shake the principal's hand, and return to our seat. Help me get through this, Robin said to Barry, who stood just behind me in line. Robin had missed the graduation rehearsals and was worried she would make some obvious misstep during the ceremony. Barry told her to stand between us so he could prompt her. The school band sat on the far corner of the stage, and at 5.30 sharp, they began playing the familiar Elgar March. We began our slow procession into the amphitheater in two long lines, one from each side. Robin, Linda, and I were among only ten seniors who wore the gold cords designating us as lifetime members of the California Scholarship Federation. I felt proud that our drama department was so well represented. The gold cords matched the tassels on our mortarboard caps and contrasted nicely with our forest green graduation robes. Because the CSF seal bearers were at the head of the line, I found myself in the first row of folding chairs. Robin stood to my immediate left and Barry beside her. After all the seniors had made their way into the seating area, we were signaled to sit in unison. In the printed program, the entire commencement exercise fit neatly on a single page, but I thought the ceremony seemed to drag on forever. First, the audience stood for the invocation by a minister from a local church. Then, while everybody was still on their feet, Jim Montoya, vice president of the senior class, led us in the flag salute. After that, the school band played the national anthem. Next, Daryl Coppage, our student president, walked to the podium to present the class to the principal. Then, Superintendent Walter Ziegler introduced various members of the Board of Education. Principal James then introduced other guests seated on the stage. This was about as much pomp as I wanted, but we still had a lot of circumstance to get through. Our valedictorian, Patricia Diani, took the podium next to give a speech. This was followed by two other student speakers, Anita Moore and Bob Ain. I glanced at my watch and saw that fully half an hour had passed, and they still hadn't started reading the names of the graduates. Let's get this show on the road, I thought to myself. After the student speakers, the school band played another piece. Then Principal James presented the class to Superintendent Ziegler. At that point, finally, the presentation of diplomas, well, the empty folders, anyway, began. As my row began moving to our right, Robin and Barry stood directly behind me in the line. Oh, look, Robin whispered as we approached the steps. She was pointing to a spot on the lawn a few feet in front of us. What is that? I asked. It's a roach, she said, a perfect send-off for the first graduating class of Royal High. 
Looking closely, I saw she was pointing to a marijuana cigarette butt. I don't know whether I was more surprised that Robin knew what it was or that she called it a roach.